to the channel guys it's starting to get really sunny in the UK now so we're going to start talking about solar again those of you that know have followed the channel for a while you know that this shed or this workshop is completely powered by solar it's completely off grid go check some of the other videos out about that I've got something really really cool to show you look at this thing it is flipping massive so this is a 360 watt panel it's about two meters high and it's probably one of the most powerful ones you can find in the UK at the moment, I think. So what I'm gonna do is stick it up there with the other ones. Right, I've stuck it up there. I've got some of these extension wires as well, which I've run over here, down there, and then... Oh, hello. So now I'm basically just gonna run them down there, you see across the top there, I'm just gonna link them up to that, and then come into the workshop on the side, there's a hole there, and then I can run them down. But let's just test to see if we've got any voltage coming through here, just to make sure it's all kind of working. Right, there we go, 46 volts unloaded, not bad. Right, so it's the next day now, a little treat for everyone that was complaining in the comments about me always wearing a hat. That's why. Anyway, it was a really bright and cold morning this morning, which is really good for solar panels because it means that the voltage is a little bit higher um, when it's colder. And if you've got a bright sunlight on, um, on the panels when it's cold, it means a lot more voltage and you can even see sort of higher peak powers, which is great. So winter sun is actually a really good one um, for solar panels. So I got everything rigged up last night, got the panel on the roof. It was a bit of a nightmare. One of the MC4 connectors was playing up and I couldn't close it. And it, by the time I got it sorted, there was virtually no light left. So it wasn't really worth filming everything, but this is what I've done anyway. So I've got this panel hooked up to this grid time inverter here, which is a 600 watt eco-worthy grid time inverter. Um, and it actually has got, at the moment, I've got the other panel, the other two panels into this um, grid tie as well. So at the moment, we've got about 700 watt peak of panels total capable going into this 600 watt grid tire but it should limit the power at about 600 watts so we should see 600 watts going into the house that's the theory anyway if we can get some good sunlight today so i won't go into too much detail about all the other stuff i've got here um it'd probably be a case for another video and also if you've seen other videos on this channel you know roughly what this is about but i will be doing an update on this by the way this has been running for about a year so no problems with this one at all but it has only been running at about sort of three three to 350 watts peak something like that so this box on the left is actually where i'm feeding the power back from that grid time inverter into the house so you can see in there and that little flashing light thing there is actually like a grid meter and that's connected to a raspberry pi which is running venus software which can monitor everything but basically what it allows you to do is to log in on a web browser and actually see you know what your production is and stuff at the moment it's really low it's like 91 the clouds are out completely but um there you go bumping up to like 129 so yeah i mean this just shows you exactly what's happening um you can see sort of total yield and stuff like that this actually links into victron's vrm system as well so you can see all your yield and stuff on a graph which i'll show you now right so you go guys there's some information here about the battery and stuff like that which is not really relevant for this video but um, if we scroll down you'll be able to see this one here this is basically the grid time inverter um, being monitored via that thing up there and then it's, it's basically broadcast onto the internet and then you can see it on this graph so you can see a maximum peaks around yeah it should be higher than that this was peaking at around 600 watts earlier so i don't know why this is showing a bit lower but there you go that's it anyway and it will just carry on plotting um all day every day and just log basically what you what you bring in so if we look at last seven days you can see all the peaks you know as it's basically every day these are the really sunny days where it just ramps up and then sits at the same pretty much all day and then fades out at night so you can see here the last two days have been a bit a bit rubbish and this day here is where I've added obviously that extra solar panel and that's what the difference is. You can see the difference made on there. So without the monitoring and stuff like that, this is a really simple way of basically just saving a bit of money on your electric bills. You can just put a panel up and one grid time inverter, connect it to the mains, get it wired in properly, I'd advise. And you can actually benefit from a bit of free energy. Actually, it's a good experiment to do if you're sort of learning about this stuff as well. It's a good hobby. It's, it's a bit addictive though, because you start, you know, like me, you start adding things and then by the time you've done that, you might as well have just bought a big commercial system, but it's not as much fun. And they're a lot more expensive than this kind of fiddling around. Right guys, I've just come into the house and you can see I'm monitoring the system on my phone now. So you can see 231 watts going in, that's coming in from the solar panels, 
And then this is the uh, the power of the house at the moment. Um, this is the power going out of the house. So this is what basically we what we're getting billed for. Um, so you see 627. So normally my house loads are around 800 watts. So you can see that that 233 or whatever this is is just basically reducing this number here. So over the last couple of days, the lowest I've seen this go down to is about 200 watts, so virtually nothing. It's really useful and important to know what your base loads of your house are, so what your house is drawing all of the time um, from the mains, even when most of the stuff you're using is turned off, you know, this will normally sit at that level. So it's important not to go beyond that, because otherwise then you're pushing power into the grid, and most um, utility meters will probably charge you for that energy. Um, if they're like kind of recent ones, they'll probably add that energy to your bill, which is what you don't want. And then if you're gonna do a bigger system, then you're gonna to have to monitor what you're putting back in and control how that works. And that's a little bit more complicated than this sort of DIY stuff. So the next thing I wanna do, because these wires just come in from the outside, there's no um, switch or anything like that on these. I need to do like an isolation thing with these. So a bit like what I've got here behind this keyboard. Um, everything's crammed in this workshop. But yeah, this basically just shuts down the different um, the different panels or you can send the panels to um, you know different places in my system. But but my system is a little bit complicated at the moment, mainly because I like playing around and changing everything about all the time. So that data that we've been looking at there is actually the data for the three panels that I've got on the roof, not just that one 360 watt one. I'm not sure what that 360 watt one actually puts out on its own. I'm gonna wait till it gets a bit sunnier and then we can see what it actually puts out peak. Um, because when they're joined together in parallel, you get losses because they're not the same panel type. Anyway, it's a lot, a lot of complications. If you're gonna do it, make sure you just get all the panels the same, all the, all the panels you need right at the beginning and then do it that way rather than just adding on panels. Unless you're gonna put them on different grid time inverters, yeah, do it that way. My plan with this is to get another one of these. I've got another one on the way, and then I'll probably split these out. So I've got one set of panels that are exactly the same on this inverter, and then this 360 watt one will go on that other inverter, and then I'll probably just try and stack these up nicely. But these are, these are fantastic bits of kit. They're not UL certified or anything like that, so be careful when you're messing around with all this stuff. This is for a hobby, so you know I would recommend getting a proper UL certified inverter if you're going to connect it to the mains. Probably alright for experiments, but just, yeah, do that. It's looking a bit grey now out here. That's for a wind turbine, by the way. Right, this thing's fully charged and ready to go. Useful bit of information, just two solar panels can cover the complete energy usage for this car every day. Just two solar panels. Right then guys, I've got my hat on, so I'm gonna bring this video to a close. I did actually do some more tests of this of that panel on its own, and it's reaching probably about 320 watts, something like that. But the sun hasn't been perfect of late, it's typical with all this stuff. The minute you start messing around, then the sun goes away and you end up with really grey weather. So I'm gonna do some more tests on that and I'll keep you updated on the progress of that and everything else with this system. If you've got any questions, just chuck them in the comments. It's always really good to see what you know you guys are doing. And um, as well with e-bike stuff, don't forget to go and check out the store because we've got all the, all the e-bike parts in, in stock and stuff now it, it's just mad lots going on but anyway i hope you enjoyed watching the video don't forget thumbs up subscribe all the usual stuff and i'll catch you in the next one. Oh yeah one final thing 